friends welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple during the previous tutorials we have studied the mesh current concept and during this we study super mesh concept friends first let us see what do we mean by super mesh concept i can say that a super mesh concept is a process of solving the network having super mesh in it then how to identify that the network has a super mesh a network contains a super mesh if it has an ideal current source in any branch then how super mesh concept of solving the network is different from a mesh current method friends a super mesh concept of solving the network is an extension of a mesh current method the only difference in it is in identification of the super mesh plus we need necessarily to write some constraint equations we will see those details to study the concept of a super mesh let's take an example wherein we are required to find current delivered by the voltage source of 10 volts in the network shown in figure 1 using super mesh concept first let's visualize the network it has five junction nodes and they are a b c d and e it has eight branches and they are b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 b7 and b8 friends it also has four independent loops and they are l1 l2 l3 and l4 as shown in figure it has four sources two practical voltage sources one of 10 volts in series with an ohm another of 5 volts in series with one ohm one practical current source of 5 amperes in parallel with one ohm and it has one ideal current source of 2 amperes friends the given network is shown in figure 1 and we see that it has four loops is it possible to reduce the number of loops yes it is possible to reduce the number of loops by converting the practical current source of 5 amperes so if we convert a practical current source of 5 amperes we get a practical voltage source of 5 volts in series with 1 ohm as shown in figure 2 now if we replace the branch between c and d we find that 5 volts and 5 volts are in series its equivalent is 10 volts and 1 ohm and 1 ohm are in series and its equivalent is 2 ohm and hence we get a reduced network as shown in figure 4 friends the reduced network is shown in figure 4 and you see that there are three independent loops and three mesh currents i1 i2 and i3 are assumed as usual now how to identify the super mesh to identify the super mesh open the branch containing the ideal current source as shown in figure 5 and look for the closed loop formed as shown and that is a super mesh now if i ask you how many unknowns are there in the network you know there are three unknowns i1 i2 and i3 and then so we need three balance equations to solve this network friends the circuit containing super mesh is shown in figure 5 and you know that there are three unknowns and three balance equations are required as expressed earlier in a super mesh method of solving the network we are required to obtain necessarily what are known as constraint equations and we shall see what are they friends 
Now let us see what are constraint equations. I can define a constraint equations as the equations which are required to be written compulsorily. And you see that two constraint equations are required to be written. One constraint equation is for the branch containing the ideal current source and another is the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the super mesh. So, by writing one constraint equation for the branch containing ideal current source, we get I1 minus I2 is equal to 2. How did we get this? If you observe the ideal branch containing 2 amperes, it is the algebraic sum of the two currents I1 and I2 and the orientation of I1 and 2 ampere is in the same direction and hence it is plus I1 minus I2 is equal to 2. Let it be equation 1. By writing another constraint equation for the super mass, tracing it in the clockwise direction, we get plus 10 minus 2 I1 minus 3 I2 plus 3 I3 is equal to 0. By rearranging it, we get minus 2 I1 minus 3 I2 plus 3 I3 is equal to minus 10. Let it be equation 2. Now, we need one more equation to solve for three unknowns. Hence, writing Kirchhoff's voltage equation for mesh 3, tracing it in the direction opposite to its self mesh current I3, we get minus I1 minus 2 I2 plus 5 I3 is equal to minus 10. Let it be equation 3. By solving these three simultaneous balance equations, we get I1 is equal to 2.375 amperes, I2 is equal to 0 0.375 amperes and I3 is equal to minus 1.375 amperes. But what we are required to find? We are required to find the current delivered by the voltage source of 10 volts and hence it is I1 and I1 is equal to 2.375 amperes. Friends, let me summarize the procedure of solving the network using super mesh concept. First and the foremost, visualize the connectivity of the network by identifying the junction nodes, branches, independent loops and the types of sources given in the network. Reduce the loops if possible without disturbing the branches or circuit elements in which the unknown is to be found out. Assume mesh currents for the independent loops as usual. Identify the branch containing ideal current source and write one constraint equation for that branch in terms of unknown mesh currents. Open the branch containing ideal current source and identify the super mesh. Write another constraint equation that is Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the super mesh using assumed independent variables. If more balance equations are required, identify the other closed loops and write the Kirchhoff's voltage equation. Remember, number of balance equations is equal to number of unknowns. Solve the simultaneous balance equations obtained and get to the required parameter asked for in the problem statement. Friends, to emphasize the concept that we have learnt, let us take another example to find current Ix in the circuit shown in figure 1 using super mesh concept. By visualizing the network, we find that there are two junction nodes A and B, two independent loops L1 and L2, three branches B1, B2 and B3. There are three sources, one practical voltage source of 10 volts in series with 2 ohm, another ideal current source of 3 amperes and the third is 
the current dependent voltage source of 2 ix volts. Now if you see there are two loops and hence two mesh currents i1 and i2 are assumed as usual in one direction as independent variables as shown in figure 2. Now the ideal current source branch is opened and the super mesh is identified as shown in figure 2. Friends, to find Ix, first let us write the constraint equations. By writing the constraint equation for the branch containing ideal current source, we get minus I1 plus I2 is equal to 3. Let it be equation 1. By writing another constraint equation, that is Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the super mesh, tracing it in the anti-clockwise direction, we get minus 10 plus 2 Ix plus 1 into I2 plus 2 I1 is equal to 0. But Ix is equal to I1. Hence, substituting for Ix and rearranging it, we get 4 I1 plus I2 is equal to 10. Let it be equation 2. By solving both the simultaneous equations 1 and 2, we get I1 is equal to 1.4 amperes and I2 is equal to 4.4 amperes. But we want Ix and we know Ix is equal to I1 and hence Ix is equal to 1.4 amperes. Friends, let's take another example to find power delivered by the ideal current source of 5 amperes in the circuit shown in figure 1 using super mesh concept. By visualizing the network, we find that there are four junction nodes and they are A, B, C and D. And there are three independent loops L1, L2 and L3. There are six branches B1, B2, B3, B4, B5 and B6. And there are four sources, two practical voltage sources, one of 5 volts in series with 2 ohm, another of 10 volts in series with 2 ohm and one ideal voltage source of 3 volts and one ideal current source of 5 amperes. And you should know that if we want the power delivered by the ideal current source of 5 amperes to be found out, we need to find the voltage across it. Friends, the given circuit is reproduced here as shown in figure 2. Let I1, I2 and I3 be the mesh currents assumed as usual as shown in figure. By opening the branch containing the ideal current source of 5 amperes, the super mesh is identified as shown. First, by writing the constraint equation for the branch containing the ideal current source, we get minus I1 plus I2 is equal to 5. Let it be equation 1. By writing another constraint equation for the super mesh, tracing it in the anti-clockwise direction, we get plus 3I2 plus 5I1 minus 10 plus 2I2 minus 3I3 minus 3I3 minus 10 is equal to 0. By rearranging it, we get plus 5I1 plus 5I2 minus 6I3 is equal to 20. Let it be equation 2. There are three unknowns. Hence, we need one more equation. Therefore, by writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for loop 3, Tracing it in the direction opposite to its self mesh current I3, we get minus 3I1 minus 3I2 plus 6I3 is equal to minus 3, let it be equation 3. Friends, the three balance equations obtained equation 1, 2 and 3 are reproduced here for convenience. By solving the three simultaneous equations, we get I1 is equal to 0.5 amperes, I2 is equal to 5.5 amperes and I3 is equal to 2.5 amperes. But to find the power delivered by the ideal current source, we need to find the voltage across it. And if you observe the network, Vab is the voltage across the ideal current source. So 
by writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation from point A to point B, we get VAB is equal to 5 minus 5I1 plus 3I3. By substituting the values of I1 and I3, we get VAB is equal to 10 volts. Hence, power delivered by the 5 ampere source is equal to 10 into 5, that is 50 watts. Friends, network solving will be a pleasure if you are thorough in circuit concepts, for which I suggest you go through my earlier videos on network technology, analysis of series and parallel circuits, star delta conversion, voltage and current sources and their handling. I hope this tutorial on super mesh concept has ignited your thoughts. If so, please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.